Just like driving a car, the faster you push down, the faster it goes. On off switch, and some of them have a forward reverse switch. So if you are right handed, your wheel should be turning counterclockwise. If you're left handed, your wheel should be turning clockwise. It's, it's better if I'm left handed than I'm left handed. Yeah, if you've never thrown before, you might as well just throw going this right way because I can help you better. <laughs> I, have a, I have a hard time. It's really hard when you've thrown for so long one way and then try to change your so hand. Counterclockwise for right handed people. So, first thing you do, get your ball clay. Smack it down on there, you know, try to get it stuck. If it's not stuck by throwing it down, you can wet your finger, kind of run it across the bottom like that. It seals it to the wheel head so it's not going to move around. Now you want to get this centered. The idea here is that we're making something round, okay? Important, elbows down, okay? So you're braced on your legs. If, uh, if that doesn't work, if your legs are too short, you can brace on the side of your splash pan here. But your left hand, just like wedging, you're using this part of your hand right here, which is directly in line with your forearm, so that I'm pushing into the clay. So if I'm just pushing like this, you can see how that's already starting to go on the center. And if I follow it up, right? So that doesn't do the best job. So we're gonna use the right hand and uh, using the four fingertips, okay? As a point of contact, right directly opposite this. Okay, so if there was no clay in the middle, this would be making a clamp, and this would be touching. So I'm squeezing, and the clay has nowhere to go but up, so I need to follow the clay up through to the top. And usually you usually need to do this one or two times. To get it centered, and then, obviously I can't really do much with this, so I need to go back down. So once you pull up through, what I like to do is, is transition my hand right over to where this joint is right resting on the top and this pushes down. Now you need this right hand stays in the same position on the back side to kind of guide it down. And uh, this is just like wedging, like doing this up and down will get rid of air bubbles. It, was all, it will also uh, kind of blend the clay together to make it to a nice even consistency. I like to throw with my sponge, so you'll see that I do that a lot. You don't have to. Some people do, some people don't. It's really personal preference. Um, just like with the hand positions that I talked to you about, these are what I do. You know, there's a lot of right ways to do something. Um, there is some wrong ways too, and uh, if you, I see that you are doing something wrong, I will point it out to you. Uh, <laughs> Or maybe not wrong, but maybe not the most efficient way to do something. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> okay, so we have a centered hockey puck. Right? So now we want to open this up. We want to create some volume on the inside. And with this, I'm going to throw just a basic cylinder. So I'm going to take one finger, two finger, whatever you feel most comfortable with. But I like to put my hand on there and just run it over until I feel center. Um, instead of trying to like pick it out and point down to it, I just run my hand over. Does that make sense? Okay. So once I find center, now I'm going to just plunge my finger down to a good depth. Um, now at this point, usually I can eyeball how deep um, my floor is, but this kind of takes some practice. So if you want to check, you can take your needle tool, stick it in there <coughs> until it hits the bottom, and then run your finger down until it touches the, the clay f floor, and pull it out, and that's your thickness. Okay, so that's. You know, not a lot of room to trim a foot, but I'm just throwing a basic cylinder, so. You know, if I had a bowl and I wanted to trim a nice deep foot on there, I'd probably leave maybe like, I don't know, half an inch or something. So now I want to widen this out, because 
obviously that would be a really tall, tiny cylinder. Um, so I'm just going to hook my fingers in and pull straight towards me, uh, pulling parallel to the wheel head so that the thickness of the bottom stays the same. Okay, go back and uh, use my sponge and just lightly press down, run my fingers back and forth, and this compresses the bottom. Uh, compression is important for cracking. Sometimes you'll get those spiral cracks, and that's usually when you throw off the hump. Right? But that's all due to compression issues. Um, you can still get that even if you're not throwing on the hump sometimes. So I have a nice little donut here and it's pretty centered. It's a little off. You can kind of see it vibrate a little bit. But say it was really off like that. Okay. Now this is the best way to recenter something. Okay, I'm gonna create this tunnel with my hand. Okay, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab this like this, and hold it tight, creating this space in between my fingers, right? And then with this other hand, with my sponge, I'm gonna press down on top, and I'm just gonna hold it there. And you see how that goes right back on the center? Okay, let me do a little trick. I bet you haven't seen that before. Okay, now this is ready to uh, pull up and add some height. So first thing I'll do, I'll uh, kind of press in the bottom there, giving myself a little ridge of clay that I can pull up. Now on these first pulls, especially with this amount of clay, I like to use um, this grip method, where I'm only pulling with one hand, pretty much. The other hand is, is back here too, helping, but it's really only, instead of having the right hand on the outside and the left hand on the inside and using like, these points of contacts to pull up, I'm going to be like, the point of contact is like this. Does that make sense, everybody? 